Hello guys, I'm going to show you today how to create a reverse connection application. Uh, what, what we're basically going to be doing is making a vb.net app that loads a website and it, it runs a command. Now I changed this from dot 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 to these two characters. I just find it it's easier to work with that. So we need to start by having a web browser. So we'll double click that. That's going to place the web browser right here. And if we want, and just make this as large as we want. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, change the window state from normal to minimized. We're going to just to hide this. Then we can make the start position center screen. And that doesn't really matter since it's minimized. I just do that out of habit. Uh, I always set show and taskbar to false. And we we should be able to to just go with this. So essentially, we're going to be using a timer. So we need to double click timer and click the timer. Change the interval to five thousand. That's five seconds. We're going to switch the timer from false to true. And the, the timer we could change the name to something else if we wanted to, like TMR refresh with the capital R. So that this is our refresh timer. The web browser object we can change the name of this to WB um, command. And and the reason why we're we're calling this a command web browser is because this web browser is making every five second interval connections over here to refresh this page to see if the command has changed. If the command has changed, we're gonna do whatever it's telling us to, whether that's launch calculator.exe or launch any other program or install something or whatever. What what we're doing here is we're just showing you how simple it is to make software like this. I'm not doing this to teach you how to make the software. I'm doing it just for educational or, or informational purposes so you understand just how incredibly simple software like this is. What we need to start by doing is double click the web browser. So anytime that the web browser loads, we're, we're gonna be calling commands or we, we're gonna be checking for commands and split the command apart to actually make it launch something or, or do something we want it to. In order to do that, we need to dim specific string uh, string variables. So we're gonna start by saying like dim, uh, let's say what command as string, and then dim do what as string. So this is just gonna give us two, two variables, the, the what command and then the do what. So you don't need to, to make these the, the same names if you if you don't want to if you're following along though and you don't know what you're doing make sure to use all the same names for everything it's going to make your life a lot simpler but once you understand how names work and, and what what's going on i highly recommend you know obviously that you, you you get playing around and use your own your own naming system but i would then double click the timer and we're going to say whoops wb command dot navigate and then we will be telling the web browser to navigate here every five seconds. Because as you remember, the interval was set to 5,000. That's every five seconds. It's gonna be calling this right here with the timer. So it's gonna basically be just refreshing. And right here, every time that the document loads, we want to Here, yeah, basically what we're gonna say is if what command is equal to what, whoops, no, we renamed it wb command dot document text, then we're gonna exit the sub. And the reason why the, the logic behind this is that when, when this loads, if it's already done it, we don't want it to keep doing it, right? Like if we launched the calculator executable once, we don't want it to keep doing that every five seconds. If you did, you would take the exit sub out. It'll not, it'll not like exit out of the sub unless the command is different. So with this, the setup right here, we're gonna only do this every five seconds and unless the command changes and we'll, we'll do the next thing. And 
like like I said, it's totally optional. You can set this up however you want to. Now we just need to say that what command is going to be equal to wb command dot document text. So there we go. We've got that taken care of. From now on, we can use our variable. So we'll say if what command dot contains app whoops app launch then we're going to whoops then we're going to say do what equals uh, what command dot split we're going to split it at the those two lines and make sure to, to call the following one so that's our calc.exe so I believe I believe this would be zero and this is two. I, I think that's how it works anyways. Um, from there, we'll just be able to call shell. Uh, the way I do it is kind of old school. There's probably newer ways to do what I'm doing, but we're just gonna go with it because I, I love doing it this way. It's super simple and it's harmless to do it this way. If we save the project and we run it, we, we can see we don't see the application, we don't see what's going on, and boom, the calculator just opened. Now, what we could do is come up here to our server and change this from calc, whoops, to ms, geez, I can't type, mspaint.exe. So in it, after the five second timer refreshes the page, we should see MS Paint launched. Did it, did it not save it? All right, let's try, maybe let's try PowerShell. Well, it uh, it should definitely be working. Not really sure why why it would stop randomly working. It literally just worked with calc.exe, unless I'm doing things incredibly wrong. Okay, so that works. Where the hell is MS Paint then? Okay, there. Apparently. Apparently, maybe I was doing it wrong. I, I don't, I don't see how I was doing it wrong, but there, it's working. So the the main thing, I guess, is to know that this will work most of the time, but maybe it just won't work all the time. So I mean, that's this is what you get for free, though, right? I, I'm just kidding. But essentially, what you have here is an application where you have the web server being called by the application there's a you have a web browser the web browser is refreshing every five seconds listening for a new command the the amount of traffic or bandwidth that this would take up may it, it over time you know the larger that you're making this system it would probably it this system is probably not super efficient in which case you could use like timestamps maybe to see when the, the document last changed and then not not keep reloading the whole document every single time unless that timestamp changes. So you, you could make the, the system more efficient, but essentially what we're doing here though is just demonstrating how easy it is to make a, a platform like this. And you can tell all that this application is doing is every five seconds, we're using this web browser object to automatically reload this page. If the command changes, we're going to do it. Uh, if the command doesn't change, we're going to just skip over doing anything because we, we've already done it, right? Like it's already launched MS Paint. We don't need MS Paint open again. If we wanted to, we could change this to task manager and, and maybe have task manager open after, after that five second timer goes through. Um, and, and there we go. On my other monitor, I just saw task manager open. So th this 
you, you could maybe call like log off and, and log the machine off. I, that, that would be really annoying. Um, and, and then of course this application would not auto start. In order to do that, you would need to, you'd need to copy the application over into the startup folder, which that, that's really easy to figure out. But yeah, the, the point, I guess the point is, is that it's incredibly simple to to take advantage of Microsoft Windows. And I, I think that this is probably the easiest and largest way that people make applications like this. Um, you, you could you could certainly increase the, the security and mitigate detection on this by, by setting up HTTPS. So if you had like SSL, um, you just need an SSL cert, like maybe use CertBot, set up a, a some throwaway domain, and this would work fine. I, I obviously am highly not recommending that you use any of this information for, for malicious purposes because the security is important and I, I think it's way better to, to do good things and to show people how things work. Uh, I, I don't think it's, it's a good idea, obviously, to misuse this information though. So, so do not do that. Don't, don't abuse my trust. And I think, I think overall, this gives people a good idea about how simple making uh, making software like this is.